Hey everybody, BAM Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a special update on the 2025 hurricane season. It is June 25th, and so we are in hurricane season at this point, and we actually just had our first named tropical system of the season in the Atlantic, which was Andrea. It formed out in the middle of the ocean, it's already weakened, and has faded and exited, if you will. And right now, if we take a look at the next seven days, really not anticipating any kind of activity as we close out June and we start out the month of July. And so it's been relatively quiet to this point. By now, a lot of times we've seen a couple of storms, maybe a hurricane. Certainly the peak season is still a ways off as we close August and into September, but we're getting closer. And so it's time for a look ahead on what we anticipate based off of trends that we've seen in the sea surface temperatures, based off trends that we've seen in the La Nina and the El Nino region, what's happening there. All of that matters in terms of what the storm track will likely be as we go into the heart of hurricane season, how many storms it will be, how active it will be, and uh, what the risk is in terms of more strong hurricanes. We've seen several of those the past couple of years in the Gulf. What are we looking at for this upcoming season. And with all that in mind, I want to start here. And this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, pattern drivers in terms of the evolution of hurricane season. And that's just the sea surface temperatures compared to normal and the sea surface temperature pattern in the Atlantic Ocean. Certainly La Nina and El Nino have a major impact and we will get into that. But just in terms of the intensity, in terms of the storm track, this has a huge, huge impact. And so again, I wanted to start here I think right off the bat, one of the core things that you'll see, much above normal ocean waters extending from the Gulf out into parts of the central Atlantic Ocean with cooler than normal waters up near Greenland and seasonable to cooler than normal waters in the subtropics and down towards the tropical regions. And so something that I think right off the bat that I notice is the main development region, which is in here, typically we get storms to develop, lows, waves to develop off the west coast of Africa and work out into this region. And this is where we get the most tropical development. It's where our lows and our tropical depressions and storms most frequently form. Well, we've got seasonable to cooler than normal waters in here would typically indicate maybe slightly less favorable conditions, certainly compared to the last couple of years in this region. In fact, this is a huge deviation from the last couple of years. The orientation of the sea surface temperatures with the warmth kind of in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and more seasonable to cooler waters in the main development region, that's actually flipped from where we were this time last year. We had very warm ocean waters in the main development region this time last year, and it was a little bit more seasonable in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And so certainly a big change there. I think right now what this would indicate to me is that may be a little bit more difficult to get more frequent storms to develop in this main development region. However, given the very warm ocean waters near the coast, in the Gulf and kind of up the East Coast, it will make it easier for any storms that do develop to rapidly intensify in the Gulf or the southeastern part of the country. And so, again, that's just based off of the sea surface temperature analysis that we're looking at here would indicate that potential. If we expand this a little bit further, let's take a look at our Enzo regions. We were in a La Nina or a, a cool neutral state this past winter. Uh, that developed late last season, which helped hurricane activity to ramp up later in the fall. Right now, I would say we're around neutral. We have some warmer waters here. We have some cooler waters here. It's not really a strong signal towards the La Nina or an El Nino. Traditionally speaking, La Ninas, especially years that are moving into a La Nina, tend to favor more active hurricane seasons, while years that are trending towards an El Nino tend to favor less active hurricane seasons. Right now, we're not really moving towards one or the other. We're just kind of in this neutral and steady state. And if we take a look at some of the model guidance as we work ahead, you can see, generally speaking, most of the guidance tends to favor us staying in this neutral territory. All these lines are different pieces of model guidance that go out through the fall and into the winter, even out into next spring. And generally speaking, most of them are staying in the neutral territory. If there's a slight tendency, if there's a slight tendency, it's slightly cooler 
slightly closer to that La Nina edge, which would mean a slightly more active risk. Maybe not the most active, but at least slightly more active. And then I think perhaps even the most critical part of this in terms of the United States impacts, the ocean waters in the Gulf. And right now, if we take a look, you can see much warmer than normal ocean waters in the Gulf, especially near the panhandle of Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana there. If we look here, we can see that right now we are actually running as the warmest on record. We're basically tied with 2023 right now in terms of the warmest on record for this date as of June 24th. And so running very, very warm. And again, warm ocean waters means fuel. It means fuel for storms to develop to rapidly intensify. My concern with this type of a look is that any storms that could develop in the Gulf, especially in this region in here, have the risk to rapidly intensify as they make landfall. It would be the opposite if there was cooler than normal waters here. It would mean that it they would struggle to intensify. But this is one thing that's been consistent year over year as of late. We've seen a lot of rapidly intensifying storms near the coast. It's why we've had so many major hurricane landfalls over the past several years. I certainly think that that is a risk once again this year. And I do think it's important to keep in mind, model data struggles with that. Model data typically underdoes when these storms rapidly intensify. It's why a lot of times as you get closer, you see hurricane forecasts go from a cat two to a three to a four very, very quickly as models try to catch up with the rapid intensification risk. Now, obviously, I'm speculating way out into the distance, but I'm just talking about trends. I'm talking about what the potential implications could be given the ocean waters here. In terms of our top analogs, so I'm looking at years that are similar with Enzo. I'm looking at years that were similar with our ocean waters here in the Atlantic and in the Gulf. Here are the top ones that we found. 2021, 2019, 2018, 2017, a lot of those late 2010s, very similar with the Atlantic Ocean pattern, 2013 and 2001. What we have plotted here is basically the frequency in terms of a density map of tropical activity. And you can actually see, while this is the area that most frequently sees the development every year, it's actually a little bit less frequent compared to tropical activity near the Gulf Coast and off the southeast coast of the U.S. This would basically indicate that this year there's more frequent tropical activity in this region in here than there is in the main development region and in the Caribbean. And so right now, we would be looking for storms to be developing more towards the coast of the U.S. rather than in this main development region. It can mean that instead of long-lasting, long-lived storms that develop off the coast of Africa and go all the way out to the coast of the U.S., it would mean that they're more likely to form towards the U.S. coast. Now, I also think it's important to keep in mind with that, it might mean less total storms. You're naturally, if you get storms to develop out here and have more time to mature, you're going to get more total storms and subsequently more risk of impacts to the United States. We might not see that this year, but when storms do develop, they can do so in the Gulf. If you take a look at what this indicates just compared to normal values, we kind of have two main storm tracks to pick up. Some kind of a, a, a formation in the Gulf that then comes up through here with storms and then out to sea, kind of doing this type of a deal here, out to sea. And so that's kind of the idea. Again, the idea here, less activity compared to normal east of the Caribbean and in the Caribbean towards the Yucatan. A little bit more activity along the coast in the U.S. and then out to sea in the middle of the central Atlantic, which, by the way, this is right where Andrea formed. And so we've already kind of started to see that type of an idea. To sum things up, here's our official outlook. Above normal in these yellow areas, that does include the northeast part of the country, maybe a slightly higher than normal threat this year for some kind of an impact given the warm ocean waters off the east coast. And above normal threats for developments for development, excuse me, along the Gulf Coast, Texas, Louisiana, the panhandle of Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, and then out into the southeastern part of the country, maybe a little bit less so towards 
eastern and southeastern Florida and into the Caribbean compared to the last several years. In terms of total named storms, we're going about average compared to the last 10 years. So not favoring above normal storms given what we talked about earlier, generally favoring average total of named storms, average number of hurricanes, but still the risk for two to four major hurricanes this year. And again, I think that higher threat for those will be in the Gulf, which is why we need to be keeping an eye very carefully on hurricane season and the trends as we go over the next couple of months. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe to the Clarity Home subscription where we will be detailing and timing out and giving insights of any kind of tropical activity for areas along the Gulf Coast and the U.S. as a whole once that time comes. Custom insights from our team of meteorologists pushed directly to your phone and then more tools coming soon that will help in terms of hurricane season tracking. So be on the lookout for that as well. Thanks so much. We'll chat soon.